Hello everyone. Today on Binky's Gaming Thoughts, I want to I want to make a fun video of questions that I answered that I saw from a little fun meme on Twitter, and it's fun fictional characters questions. So there are fifteen questions, and uh, also after you've watched this, write in the comments below what the answers, what your answers are to the questions. So I'm going to be reading from here. I, I'm looking at myself here. And, all right. So question number one. Your favorite fictional character. Well, of course, it has to be Solus. So as you guys know, he came up number one for my top 10 Dragon Age companions. And uh, some part of the reason is because he's a complex character. He has a tragic story that everything about his... Uh, this his his history uh, the history that has been shaped because of his actions he's full of woe blinded by his obsession because of what happened in the past you know and regardless what happens in the next game regardless of the options that are open or close to us Solus still remains my favorite companion he's my i think yeah, definitely my favorite fictional character right now. Uh, different phases in my life, there have been different characters, but this, yeah. Number two, a character you relate to. Well, for this one, I wrote Cassandra, Cassandra Pentecast. So why Cassandra? So although I'm not as physically strong as she is, obviously, <laughs> Um, in many ways, I am strong. Uh, throughout my life, I survived different ordeals. You know, like I was sick uh, in my mother's room. I was sick at birth, uh, going through uh, what I lived, you know, with, with the abuse and everything. So different moments where I could have been taken by death but that i fought on you know valiantly <clears throat> i'm going to survive and those those things in my life are like dragons and and i'm fighting those dragons you know i'm i'm training and i'm learning to use my shield so creating boundaries you know and working through uh emotional flashbacks and stuff like that and learning to know uh, when to attack the fight flight freeze thing with the anxiety of knowing when to actually attack and when to walk away from a situation you know and Cassandra is also a seeker of truth and throughout my life with what I do not just with the with the dragon age stuff with you know uh, searching the lore truth within the lore in my life searching truth uh, because of what I have lived and stuff like that. So, so that's kind of the, how, how I relate to Cassandra. Number three, a character I grew up with. <laughs> Princess Leia. So I was four years old when I saw A New Hope and Star Wars fans will call it Star Wars. And Star Wars super fans will call it a new hope. The whole concept of the Star Wars fantasy realm and everything, the, the sci-fi fantasy, uh, both combined, it, it really inspired me. And that's what I wanted to be when I grew, that's what I wanted to be and do and I want to be just like her. She was like a role model for me. When I was a kid, I watched the original Star Wars trilogy like almost every day. And, and then it was like every week, I would just alternate four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six. Four, five, six. <laughs> and eventually I ran out of time, but you, you know, the, the Star Wars lore, it's, it's ingrained in me, you know, the original expanded universe, the original expanded universe. <laughs> so that's number three. Number four, my first fictional crush, Luke Skywalker. 
So, I mean, if I grew up with the Star Wars trilogy, obviously, um, you know, uh, at age 20, 25, Mark Hamill, yeah, it was... He was a pretty good looking guy, you know, and even, uh, you know, that's episode four and even in episode five. No, I think he was 19 in episode four and in episode five, you know, he he had he had had that accident. He had those scars in episode six. He had a few like, you know, little defects and he, he was still kind of, you know. So when I was a kid, I was like episode four. Luke, I was like, yeah, I'm going to marry Luke Skywalker. <laughs> And then, and then when I was, uh, you know, like a teeny bopper, it was more like episode five, Luke, you know, with, uh, you know, with a, with a slightly more rugged look, you know, with the, uh, I'm a Jedi Knight now look. And I mean, if I could warp back in time to date Mark Hamill at age 20, I, I would. Fictionally speaking, of course, since I'm already spoken for. Oh, hold on. Fictionally speaking. Number five, your fictional crush currently. Well, everyone knows this one. Solus. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Solus. I don't know what it is. I don't typically go for bald guys. Um, I Although I do like a clean shave. Although it has happened, I like the rugged look you know, Anders, but I don't know, um, it's it just something about him, maybe because of his story, but, you know, I don't know. <laughs> In certain screenshots, he has airs, you know, just slightly of Frank, when, when Frank has that when he when he when he does this and he has that serious look or or his sad face look frank's sad face look is similar to solace's sad face look and i mean only i would see that sad face look or a certain kind of serious face look you know but because in in typically in pictures you put the two next to each other there there's a difference they don't look that much the same but, you know, just slight airs. And so maybe that plays a part in it. And I don't know if it's because of the story or the way the, the romance is written out. But of all the romances, of all the, the Dragon Age games, of all video games I've played, Solus is the, the romance that that's like the heartthrob romance and the true literal definition of heartthrob is like makes you like your heart throb with longing like oh you know and because of the tragedy of the story he is a heartthrob you know it doesn't have a happy ending you don't get married at the winter palace you know like with cullen so it's it's the heartthrob romance although i do like a happy ending typically but I don't know. I'm guessing what could factor in the reason behind. Maybe there's no reason. So of course, question number six, if you could date a fictional character, who would it be? Hmm, I wonder, perhaps an elven god. So uh, put aside that he's only romanceable to elves. If I were to uh, wake up in Thedas and Solus was there and available to me. Well, I'm not from this world. And, well, this, I'm not from Thedas. He's not exactly from Thedas as it is then. So we would have, like, some sort of understanding, you know? I, I think some of you would, like, get it, like, we come from a different world. And so maybe I would try to help him in his cause and mission in the hopes to find an alternate method because my goal is not to destroy Thedas, you know? So I totally, like flirt with him and like dude let's let's hook up fictionally speaking of course this is also in the event that i woke up in thedas and frank wasn't waking up in thedas with me because if frank's waking up in thedas with me then we're gonna try to figure out how to survive 
everything that's going on, you know, uh, it would be a good opportunity for me to practice my archery because I haven't done it in years. So that would be fun. But uh, if I did wake up in theaters, I'd probably like freak out and have a few panic attacks and cry and have withdrawal symptoms from social media and video games and stuff and I'd, I'd go crazy I'd uh, yeah yeah this this turned out to be like some sort of different question I would date Solis yes <laughs> if you could be best friends with a fictional character who would it be I'd be best friends with Cassandra she'd be my tank she's my tank my shield because she'd have my back no matter what. When she's loyal, she's got your back. And I'm reading my notes here. So I wrote here, when a guy breaks my heart, <laughs> he's down on his back. <laughs> and if it's, if it's not broken already. And uh, if someone tries to trigger me, she, uh, she gives them the menacing stare. And it's like, she flees, <laughs> you know, and she has like, she's tough, but she has that soothing and understanding side to her, which is, which is good for me. And, you know, uh, she, she would talk about Chantry rhetoric while I'd be obsessing over the elven lore, but it would be like really interesting. She's a seeker of truth and I like to seek truths and things. And so we'd combine, you know, our, our strengths to uh, figure things out. And, of course, I'd have fun doing the ugh factor with her. Like, ugh, ugh, ugh. She'd train me to be a better ugh-er, ugh-er. That's, now, that, now it's a verb. I ugh, you ugh, you ugh. Uh, we, I ugh, ugh, ugh. It sounds like I'm trying to talk German or something. But yeah, the the disgusted noise thing, like we would be the ugh buddies because we both like the ugh factor. Sounds like a X factor, ugh factor. <laughs> so number eight, if you could be a fictional character, who would it be? So if I could be, not necessarily be that character, but be like the character and have the same abilities as that character would be Luke Skywalker from the original expanded universe from the books. In the novels, he becomes so powerful. He can, he can pin someone. He pins Darth Kytus. Using the force, Darth Kytus can't move when he's saving Ben Skywalker. Um, yeah, his son. And he's the grand master of the Jedi Order. He has all these special abilities. He's really prominent at his light, lightning, like Darth Shady, my alter ego. And uh, yeah, uh, Force Lightning, Force Freeze, um, telepathy. Um, he has all sorts of amazing saber techniques. And uh, if you've read the books, you know how awesome Luke Skywalker becomes. Especially, uh, you know, Yuuzhan Vong and post Yuuzhan Vong war era. And, uh, like, he is super powerful. So I would be, I would have his abilities. I would be like Luke Spy Skywalker, Spywalker. Would I be him per se? I wouldn't want to be anyone else but me that rhymes but but i would definitely be just like him as depicted in the star wars novels of the original expanded universe number nine which fictional characters are a huge comfort to you all right so there are four the first one is cole because of the uh, his telepathy thing and the way he kind of removes hurts I did, a, I did an exercise back when I was still depressed, and which I do sometimes when I'm feeling discouraged and stuff like that, where in my mind, it was like, instead of having a meditative conversation with my subconscious, 
it, I imagined that I was having a conversation with Cole and he was saying things in his in his uh, style, which was quite interesting because it was it was addressing the wounds, addressing the hurts. And so it, it comforted me because I just let let my mind whirl imagining him saying things to me and it comforted me. The other one is Varric because he's like he's like a drinking buddy. He's a I love to play card games, so he likes to play card games. So the deal would be he teaches me how to play Wicked Grace and I teach him how to play Crib because I really love playing Cribbage. And if I woke up in Thedas and I happened to have somehow appeared with me a deck of Sabak, then I would teach him how to play Sabak because it's, it's, uh, which basically it's like a tarot deck, but it's in the Star Wars universe. So, you know, we would play card games and we would have fun and, uh, it'd be, he, he likes to exaggerate. So I would, you know, I would, I would play with that a bit and tease him and stuff. And we both like to write. We're both writers. So you know, we could we could co-write something in an exaggerated form, and it could be very strange and yet interesting. The other two uh, characters that are kind of like a comfort to me are Merry and Pippin from Lord of the Rings, uh, because yes, they're the comic relief, but despite everything they go through, because they see they see the war, they I mean, they go to, they basically, well, they don't go to Mordor, but they go to Gondor and they have to fight and everything. And they almost die and marry, you know, with his heroic act at the end, you know. So, and then they bounce back, you know, they, they see all this tragedy around them and they bounce back up quite easily. And they're fun, you know, they're fun loving, they're fun natured. They like to, they like to drink, they like to dance and sing, you know. So Merry and Pippin would probably get along well with Varric. And then Cole's just sitting around and, you know, helping us feel better and when we'd all chill together, you know. Number 10, which fictional character do you look like? So uh, I don't find necessarily that I look like any specific one video game character. Although I've been told that I could pull up, pull off a Cassandra, um, I don't, I don't know uh, if I look the most like a fictional character. What I do know is when I was younger, when I enjoyed cosplaying as Princess Leia, I could pull it off pretty well. And I do know that I can get the hairdos done when I actually take the time to do it. I can get the hairdos done pretty well. Uh, do I look exactly like her? Probably not. Uh, probably not anymore. But I mean, cosplaying, you know, when we cosplay, we can look pretty much like any character we, we try to look like, more or less. What stood out to me was back then, I was in CJEP and uh, the makeup teacher, he was a professional makeup artist and he had worked on Broadway and uh, with uh, celebs. And uh, he worked with Carrie Fisher, makeup and hair. And so he was doing stuff with my hair, which, you know, wasn't green at the time, but even longer than it is now. And he said that the texture of my hair and the way that it feels and everything was like Carrie Fisher's. And that's why I, it's easy to do those hairdos. And granted, she has... Uh, you know, hair extensions in certain of the hairdos while I was able to pull off the hairdos without any hair extensions. So, you know, but when he said that, I was like, oh, oh, I was like, you just made my day. No, 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 you just made my week. No, you just made my year, my decade. He made my decade. And everyone was like, oh, no, don't tell her that. She's, she's not going to stop going on about it. And I didn't stop going on about it. I was like, I have Carrie Fisher's hair. You know, well, I have hair uh, similar, very, very much like she 
like her hair was. So I'm like, so I'll go with that, you know. But I think I I think maybe today I can pull off more maybe a Cassandra or some sort of elf when I put on my elf ears. I don't know. What what fictional character? What video game? Well, I'm thinking, you know, Star Wars and Dragon Age, but what what character would I look like according to you? from what you've seen in my various videos. Because I know this angle looks funny, but you've, you've seen me in other angles with other hairdos and makeup on and stuff like that. So let me know. And then I'll try, maybe I'll try to cosplay as those characters <laughs> and see how, how accurately I can pull it off. Uh, so 11, is there a certain type you go for in fictional characters? Personality. So, um, Sad elf boyfriends. <laughs> so they're, they're tragic. Um, the sad elf boyfriends uh, or mages. I go for mages. Uh, Anders, Solus, uh, you know, sad elves, Fenris. Uh, although, hmm, although there's Cullen, Dorian, um, Alistair and Zephyr are more like the, the happy-go-lucky type. Cullen and Dorian, there is there is maybe a tragic aspect to them. Cullen, he he has that struggle with the with the lyrium addiction. Dorian, uh, he has that struggle with the fact that he's the vendor. So, but yeah, it's more like other than the sad elf, is there there has to be uh, some sort of trad some sort of tragedy in their life, some sort of sad aspect to them. I think that's key. Number 12 is, is there a certain type you go for in fictional characters in terms of looks? Elves. <laughs> sad elf boyfriends. <laughs> so, I don't know. There's something about the long, pointy ears. You know, um, an elven man's ear size says a lot about him. It's true. <laughs> I sad elf boyfriends. If you could meet one fictional character, who would it be? Well, it would be Solus, obviously, because first of all, I'm obsessed with him. Second of all, yes, I'd try to uh, get into his bed. Sorry, Frank. <laughs> but <laughs> fictionally speaking, fictionally speaking. <laughs> But, um, I mean, what happens in the fade stays in the fade, <laughs> fictionally speaking. But, uh, yeah, what happens in the fade stays in the fade, so it's all good. But um, I'd probably try to knock some sense into him. I wouldn't be all like, oh, I worship you, my dread wolf, elven god. Or maybe I would. But... Uh, <laughs> But it, I'd try to knock some sense into his bald head and be like, come on, man, dude, do not destroy Thedas to try to restore Arlathan. Let's try to figure out another way, you know, so. And what happens in the fade stays in the fade. 14. If you could only wear the wardrobe of one character, whose would it be? So I choose the Inquisitor, and this includes all the races and all the classes, because uh, some class specific or race specific, I mean, some of the mage robes are really are pr pretty nifty. I like some of the rogue things, the female elven rogue, uh, you know, outfit I find pretty nice. So it would be for, for male and female Inquisitors, elf, Kunari, human, and dwarf, uh, and warrior, mage, rogue. All classes, all races. That way, and I, and I have the option to change the colors with the, you know. That way I have a nice, uh, what's the English word? Un panoply. I have, I have a panoply. I have a whole wide selection of outfits I can wear. And that also includes the casual 
the well the casual or the night wear the for uh inside skyhold so yeah the inqu the inquisitors yeah the inquisitors wardrobe because it would be a nice big wardrobe i'd have choice depending on my mood depending where i'm going depending what i want to do and i would not wear the outfit at the winter palace the 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 outfit that looks like a like a royal canadian mounted police <laughs> kind of looks like that I wouldn't wear that because it looks kind of strange I'd I'd wear but I wouldn't wear those long gown dresses either with all the crinoline because that gets on my nerves a crinoline gets on my nerves my wedding dress had removable a crinoline so after after walking up the steps of the aisle I removed well at the at the place I removed the crinoline and I was like ah now I can sit down comfortably you know and number 15 What's your favorite character OTP? So like the favorite character pairing. So of course, of course I choose Solavalan because Solavalan, uh, yes, it's kind of tragic, but if they, if they can make it work together, but it's, it's a different kind of love story. You know, we don't have the typical flirt man's build up flirting love scene you know it's it's very it didn't need a love scene for the love to be conveyed as true and pure and eternal you know it's very much uh you know it's that kind of love where it's so deep and it goes beyond you know the love scene although a love scene would be nice you know next Dragon Age installment if it ends up being in Inquisition part but yeah the Salavalon pairing and um, it has a lot of touching and moving moments and yes it's tragic but there's there's a lot of hope also and that's what I like about it it's it's tragic and hopeful at the same time so it's kind of it's kind of that deep romance so what let me know what your answers to these questions are and uh what 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 character do you think i'll in today how i look now that i would be able to pull off the best as cosplay and maybe i'll try to cosplay as that and uh yeah so that was that and i'll see you all soon and I'll say, uh, may the force be with you. And well, this was like a mix, mostly Dragon Age stuff. So, Maseranas. Be sure to check out some of my other stuff. Gaming, drinks, parodies, and some random silly stuff. You can also join in on the fun on Patreon for some exclusive content. Thanks for tuning in.